Shannon? Hey, are, Stacy. Are, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm good. I was just, it's been a long day, and I just decided to just kind of lay in the grass and watch the clouds. It's so much fun. Oh, This okay. one up here, it kind of looks a little bit like a dragon. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I can, I think it actually looks a little bit more like a, I don't know, a turkey? Yeah, maybe. Or I mean, it's a griffin, maybe? Oh, a griffin. Yeah. yeah it's kind of falling apart right now, though, but... Um, oh, look at that one over there. Wait that one. Oh, look, I Which can see one? the moon. It's like a spaceship flying underneath the moon. Hold on. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, look at the moon. Just a second. Let me, let me see if I can get up there. Ooh. Oh, and wow. Yeah, that's really pretty. And look, the moon's right there. The moon is right there. It's pretty cool. That other one over there kind of looks like a turtle. See, it's got kind of a head. And oh my a gosh! Shell. Let's see if I can pan over there. Oh my gosh! It does. It's got a really long shell. Yeah, it's a long, skinny turtle. I'm sure there's a long, skinny turtle somewhere in the world. Wow, you've got a good imagination, Shannon. Using your imagination is so relaxing. I love to just lay in the grass and look at the clouds. What about that one over there? Oh, that one looks kind of like Roadrunner to me. <gasps> Road and look, there's a little fish. Oh, I see the fish. I don't really see Roadrunner. I do see the fish. It's like one fish, two fish, red fish, blue it fish. It looks exactly like that. It oh my does. gosh, so cool. You know, I think everyone should lay in the grass sometimes and look at the clouds. What it's do you think? Perfect. Look at that. I really think that's easy. a great activity. Well, hey, I think we've got even some more activities to use your imagination. Should we check them out? Yeah, let's check them out. Hey, cloud viewing is super fun and creative, but I also really like hanging out in the woods, looking up at the trees and the leaves and the branches and using my imagination. So guess what? I've got something you can make to help you not only look at the trees and relax and imagine, but stretch out and have a rest. A do-it-yourself hammock. Super simple. You ready to see what it takes? Not much. All right, all we need is two things. All we need is either a bed sheet, a rectangular bed sheet, or a tablecloth, or even a tarp, and rope. So the rope we need is gonna be thick enough to withstand body weight. And I've got two pieces here. They're at least a quarter inch thick and each piece is at least 10 feet long. And I've got it doubled up for strength and also for a loop. I'm gonna take one loop and find the end of my rectangular, this was an old tablecloth, and I'm going to bunch it all up, just this end of it. I'm gonna dive it through this loop and make a simple knot. So bring it through that loop and just tie it. Pull it nice and tight. Now go down to your other end of your sheet or your tarp or your tablecloth, bunch it together, find your other loop of the rope, dive it through the rope, tie it again. So the rope, you can get any kind. I like nylon rope, um, just so that, let's say it gets damp a little bit, gets wet in the rain or some sprinkles, um, then it's not gonna hold that moisture and get funky. So I'd go for nylon rope. Okay, get this knot really nice and tight. Now you've got a do-it-yourself hammock. We'll show you an up-close picture, but at each end, you have this extra, at least five feet long of rope. And you're going to want that to wrap around a post or a tree. And I like to use a simple knot called a trucker's hitch. From the hammock, you're going to go up a bit as you get closer to the tree. Do a loop. So I just hold it, twist, and pull a loop through. Then you have a piece to go around the tree 
and the tails are going to come through this loop and then knot and knot it. So that will be a, to a, a way to attach it to a tree or a post at each end. Want to see how it works? All right, I'm going to go check it out. When you get into a hammock, try to get into the middle and go slowly. Don't jump into a hammock. Otherwise, you might go over the other side. All right, so stretch it out. If you're making a hammock for two people, like you and a cousin or your brother or sister, you're going to want a wider sheet. Um, but this is just a, a narrow one just for one person. Hold the sides, get it spread out. And here we go. Pretty sweet, huh? Looking up, seeing all those beautiful leaves and twigs and sticks. It's like I'm in a magical world. Well, I'm going to relax here. You can go follow along. Shannon's got some other fun activities for you. Fairies and gnomes and mythical creatures. Aren't they just the best? I love the whole fairy world and everything about it. Have you ever gone out into the woods looking for the forest fairies? Well, I'm here to show you how to make some forest fairies of your own. I have a lovely collection here. Uh, we have some that are made out of some very different things. You can use a clothespin. This one's got a clothespin and some feathers and some pipe cleaners. Uh, you can also use some little flowers for a skirt. These next batch here is made out of pipe cleaners. So if you have a bunch of pipe cleaners laying around your house that you don't know what to do with, make some fairies. And, our little, and this one is like a little stick puppet that we made out of some sticks and some hot glue. Uh, this is a little felted wool ball, but you could use beads just like you have these other ones here. So I'm just going to show you the basics. Uh, if you want to get really creative, you can make things like swing sets or campfires. And you can find things to go with your fairies and stick puppets. Like this could be like a little fairy couch, right? I can sit my fairy down in the seashell. If he'll sit up right. Sometimes they're hard to make sit. There we go. So you can use your imagination and get super, super creative with these things. So start with whatever you want. I'm gonna start with the pipe cleaners because they're quick and easy. You can make them whatever color you want. If you wanna make a blue fairy, make a blue fairy. We used these great wooden beads for our heads. You can draw on them if you want with like a Sharpie marker. Just put the pipe cleaner through the bead and then you're going to want to kind of roll it down and make like a little ball so that it doesn't pull through the pipe cleaner because you want your fairy's head to stay on for sure. So here we go. There we go. Not going to fall off. So I've got my head. I think my fairy's going to have some purple arms. Uh, I don't like to cut stuff until I'm done because then uh, otherwise sometimes I guess wrong how long I want it. But you're just going to just wrap it around. We've all played with pipe cleaners before, right? And then, so here's where I would probably cut it and I lost my scissors, so I'm not going to do that. And then um, if you want to make legs, I can just kind of make legs by bending the pipe cleaner. So uh, super long arms. Let's just do this. Ta -da. Okay, this is quick and easy fairy. Uh, my legs are a little uneven. If you have a scissors, you can fix that. And then you just need to dress it. There are different ways you can make clothes for your fairy. We have used some flower petals. These have a hole in the middle. We just got some silk flowers and pulled them apart. Um, uh, some of these came from a flower craft kit that we purchased, so they already had holes in them. So you can make a little skirt for your fairy. Um, some of our little gnomes here, we used some felt to make. Pants are a little harder to make than a dress, but you can do it. We just stitched them together, just hand stitched with needle and thread, um, stitched some pants out of some pieces of felt. And then if you have a little triangle of felt, you can kind of roll it into a little hat that you can then put on your fairy for a hat. Feathers are fun to use as clothing. 
for hair, you can see all of my fairies have crazy hair. Yarn makes good hair. I've got this kind of funny paper confetti stuff that might, that'll require some glue, some hot glue or something like that. Uh, embroidery floss makes good hair. So you can just kind of use your imagination. The stick puppets are fun too. You just need some sticks. Hot glue, frequently hot glue works really well to put these guys together, but if you don't have hot glue, you can kind of lash it together with some yarn. Just sort of wrap it around, all around, and I can give him some arms and dress them just the same way. So stick puppets and little fairies and all their accessory, accessories, your imagination is your limit. We're going to show you a fun little game that you can play with all these fairies. Once you make them, don't go away. Fairies love to play in the forest or your backyard or a neighborhood park. They love to be outside in nature and you can hide your fairies for a friend to find like this fairy here. Look at her hanging out in the tree. It's so much fun to climb trees. Does anyone else like to climb trees? Fairies love to climb trees. We have some more fairies hiding in our forest. Let's see if we can go find them. Keep your eyes peeled. See if you can spot them. Our first fairy is wearing a little black dress. Can you see her? She's in the picture. Maybe you can find her. I think this one's just relaxing in a tree today. Sometimes they like to relax. Sometimes they like to play. Fairies are very fond of swinging through the plants. Do you like to swing on the swings at the park? There's another little orange one. Can you spot her? Swinging on the plants. She has another friend not too far away who also likes to swing in the plants. It's kind of like climbing a tree, but because fairies are so small, they don't need a tree. They can just climb on the plants. Look at her. Can you find the next fairy? She's wearing a little maroon dress with brown hair. Fairies also like to play games. Sometimes they like to play games with each other, like hide and seek. I think off in the distance, I see a little gnome hiding out. Can you find the little gnome? Where do you think he is? I think he must be playing hide and seek with his friends. Sometimes fairies do like to hide and it's harder to find them. But if you look very closely, you'll be able to see this one's wearing a little orange hat. Can you see his little orange hat? Fairies also need a place to live. What kind of house do you have? A house or an apartment. Maybe you like to go camping and live in a tent or a camper. Fairies like to have little houses in the woods. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can find a fairy in her house in the woods. Can you see her? They like their houses made out of very simple things like bark and sticks and leaves. Always be sure to decorate with a few flowers. Fairies like flowers. You can build your own fairy houses in your yard and see if the fairies come by. Stay tuned later this week. You're gonna get an invitation to come out to Tamarack and walk our fantasy forest land and see if you can build a little fairy house of your own.